and Jane Gates, Garden Gates, to talk to you this week a little bit about what you want to do at the beginning of September. And this will be a rough idea of what you want to concentrate on for the next couple of weeks. And you can continue with it through the month. Many of these topics we will expand upon later. But right now, here's just a start. To take care of your garden this, year, this part of the year, what you really want to do is keep it clean, clean up those leaves that are falling, dead wood that might be around, branches that are coming off. That stuff's flammable, and it's going to need to be cleaned up soon anyway because we're getting into pruning season. And this is a great time to collect seed. Go out there and make sure that you've, you know, harvested all the healthy vegetables that you can. Keep, keep them cut because it's the last of the crop that's going to be coming in and collect seed. Let some of it go to seed so you can have some for next year with both flowers and vegetables. This is the time to do it. Now if you're thinking of what you're going to do with those seeds, first of all you can start planting some of your cool weather crops. That's things like you know, broccoli, cauliflower, lettuce, peas. Start them now from seed and you'll start getting crops before the end of the year which is really nice. And another thing you can do is you can start putting in your native plants. Native California plants come back to life in the autumn, unlike the spring when most of the other plants in the rest of the country tend to go into dormancy over winter. Ours are in dormancy in the summer. So make sure anything you plant new, whether they're seeds or whether they are potted plants like your native plants, they may be drought tolerant, but they haven't yet adjusted to their new home, so make sure they stay well watered. Other jobs to do in September are to unblock your drains, swales, dry river beds, or other drainage, drainage areas. And if you haven't set up drainage, do it now. It's important. You can always have broken water lines that can flood, and we can certainly have downpours, especially as the season moves on into winter. So. You can make them look pretty, they can be decorative, or they can be totally practical. But most important, you want to conduct any large amount of water that should come down and not be absorbed right away. You don't want it running into your house, but you do want it running into a place where you can save it and use it during dry times. So that gives you an idea of some of the things you can start on. You might want to make a list and think about this month. What are you going to do in your garden? to make it a better place, to have friends, to relax in, get over some of the stress that's going on, to make it more productive, children, vegetables, whatever, and to make it more efficient and safe energy-wise and wildfire safe. We will discuss some of these to topics in detail, more so in the future, but this gives you a place to start doing your research and making your plans. Now, stay tuned because I'm going to do a second video on this. Or if you, this is all the time you've got, come back and take a look at it. I'm going to discuss a lot of the pesky insects, what they look like, what, how to recognize their damage in the garden, and what you can do about them. We have a lot of bugs that can give us trouble in our gardens, but here are some of the really common ones around this area that are giving us trouble. First of all, although this is one that you're not going to be looking, looking for this in your plants, you are going to be looking for this in every bottle or pail or bowl or area that collects water. In case you're not familiar with them, here are what immature mosquitoes look like. This first example is a raft. You see this tiny, tiny little oval black shape. Its characteristic is it doesn't sink very easily. It floats on the surface, and these are mosquito eggs. Next of all, you'll see in these tubs how they start off really small, but they're these tiny little creatures that are very identifiable because, like little worms with fuzzy ends to them, they go up to the surface and down to the bottom again. They come up to the surface to get air and move in that very, very noticeable flip-flop kind of motion. If you see those 
empty out your tubs immediately because these are the larval forms of mosquitoes and will be hatching out to adults. Here we have roly polies, so bugs or pill bugs that are normally not a serious problem, but they can eat away at your seedlings and the tops of your soft growth. They prefer to be out in the hours of darkness. And if they become a problem, you may have to use something like diatomaceous earth to cut the numbers down. Two of the three bugs that you see behind the back of this cabbage are thrips and whitefly, both of which we didn't have in this area too much previously because we used to freeze so much in the winter and they didn't bother us. They are both sucking insects that can carry disease. The third largest rounded looking balls that you're seeing on the back of this leaf are Aphids. We'll talk about them a little later, but all three do suck the juices of the plant, can carry diseases, and are harmful. Thrips are very difficult to see. They're just these tiny little, uh, sort of a grayish green, uh, almost like a dash, a little tiny dash that's printed a thin line. Tiny, tiny little ex insects but they will accumulate in great numbers and can actually, some people feel that they bite. They certainly are not good for your plants and they will do a lot of damage. The white flies, on the other hand, are also difficult to see. They are also, with a little proboscis, go in there and suck the juices out of your plants. And you can see them because they look like little tiny moths, white moths. They cause a lot of damage the same way the other two do, and if you shake your plants, you can sometimes see them easier that way as they'll fly across the darker colors around it, surrounding the area. You can see them, tiny, tiny little flying creatures. We can take another look at thrips here. Leaves, the kind of damage they do, and you can kind of see those little black the blackness that you see, there are little spots that are caused by their bodies as they are piled up there, uh, busily attacking this poor mint plant. These are pests that are actually not in the insect family, but are in the spider family. They are mites. They're little spider mites. You see them a lot on house plants. Dead giveaway is that, again, that white stippling little dotting you see on the foliage, the webbing, that fine webbing everywhere, and tiny little, mostly red mites. They also do suck the juices from your plant. You want to get rid of those. Next here we see a leaf miner, and these go for all kinds of plants. There are lots of different kinds of leaf miners and they will eat the tissues out from between the surfaces and carve out, literally, mining their way through tunnels. If you actually squeeze the tip of one with a nail, you will be killing the troublemaker right at the very end of his trail. Here you see chewed foliage like this with holes in it, big bites out of it. You can usually look fairly carefully and under the leaves around the base and you will find a caterpillar is usually the one who's causing the problems. And it's frequently, these are brassicas, anything in the brassica family, Brussels sprouts, cabbages, um, gee, kale, uh, broccoli, lots of things. Oh, and that family really, really are favorites. They're the white cabbage butterfly that you see that fly, flies around, lays its eggs. They hatch out as little green caterpillars, and they will eat up your plant. Speaking of cabbages, here is an example of those aphids we were talking about before. Clumps of them, gray little monsters that are all on the top of these cabbage leaves. 
That's you can see the yellow oleander aphid. Two more problematic critters are seen on this clivia plant, or clivia if you prefer, clivia minata. It's out of bloom right now, but you can see all along the edges here are these, they look like little brown dots. You might think that they're just damaged the leaf, but they are actually scale. There are a number of different scale insects. They live under this very, very waxy covering. You can actually scrape them off with your nail. And they, too, suck the juices out of your plants. They're best washed off. You can also use a cotton ball or any piece of cotton that's soaked in alcohol and scrub them off. The other thing you also see here are woolly aphids and especially the nymphs will form these great groups of messy cottony looking stuff. They're sticky, they exude a gooey sort of honeydew that attracts ants. Wash them off again. These are Easy. These last two are best done with cotton and with alcohol because any sprays that you put on, they're usually pretty much defended by that waxy or fuzzy covering which blocks them from any problems. So look out for these insects. They're not going to help your garden any and they will cause damage over time. Insects, wash them off regularly with water. Soap and water will work, but best of all, you want to make sure they are constantly cleaned. You have to be on top of it or they will come back. There are insecticides you can use. One of the best and most efficient are systemics, but they are very toxic and I prefer not to use them, especially don't use them on any edibles. Other than that, there are things you can mix up with water and pepper, oils, um, various assorted things that will actually work as suffocants and kill the insects. There are lots of things on the internet you can look up to find different recipes with garlic and onion and, as I said, hot peppers, oils, Spray them on with soap, and it tends to really cut down the numbers on any of these insects. They work for all of them, whether they are in the, uh, the spider family, arachnids, or whether they are actually insects. Now, I hope that information was helpful to you. You'll know when you see some of those insects or strange-looking things happening on your plants what they are, and you'll have some ideas of what you might be able to do about them. There are long, long lists of chemicals that you can use and all kinds of claims of wondering, wonderful solutions that are just magic. We like to believe there's a black and white and life is really simple and you buy a can of this and all your problems go away. Unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. So I hope I've given you some insight of things that you can do to keep yourself in charge of your garden and not the intruders and the bad insects. Thanks for tuning in. Look forward to seeing you in two weeks. And do note, I am now doing this. If this I think this is going to work out for me. So we'll have the short version at the beginning for people in a rush. Or this is going to be on my Facebook page and on YouTube. So you can go to either place if you want to review it later or if you just couldn't tune in at the time because it won't be live streaming so you're not stuck having to be here at 9 o'clock on Fridays.